Hi all, Plantside Agent here. Today I'm going to show you how I made an alcohol stove from an Altoids tin. So if you're interested, stay tuned. Okay, let me show you what I got. Your uh, standard Altoid tin and uh, what I have inside. It folds up nice and compact and it weighs uh, uh, 2.1 ounces or uh, 61 grams when it's all complete. But anyway, on the inside, I have a uh, one of the round aluminum tin it's a, uh, alcohol burner that uh, I made. And I did this on a previous video, and I'll leave a link to that video in the description of this video. Okay, and the, the stove is made using, it's called uh, aluminum posts or Chicago uh, bolts for the uh, stand and then you have some uh, regular nuts down here to attach the uh, top of the uh, uh, Chicago pin that they're drilled into the bottom so then all you do to break it out is these just screw in and get my hands to work As I get older, my hands get a little jittery. I thought I was going to do all this fine hand work after I retire, but I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> no brain surgery, in other words. Unless we both take out huge liability insurance. Okay. And these four pins. <clears throat> screw into here. Okay. And there's your pot stand. And then undo the alcohol burner, and that drops in here, and pot, and voila, there you go. You got yourself a very lightweight, very compact little alcohol stove set up. Now, <clears throat> on, uh, on these pins, uh, well, I, let me drop back one. Uh, after I'm kind of done with this description, I'm going to actually uh, show you... Uh, me building another one of these. In fact, I might build several. They're kind of cool. You can give them away to friends. But uh, anyway, uh, on the posts, uh, the the size you make them, I'll probably reiterate this in the construction, uh, depends on the size of the pot you plan on using. So I've had trouble before with the uh, the smaller pots. Say, for example, uh, this is an Ollie Camp. Uh, it's about a 20-some ounce uh, cup. But it's got it's it's kind of narrow, which a lot of the uh, cook pots are these days. But this is being rounded off, so you really have to get the pins in in narrow in order to uh, to so it to be stable. Now this I didn't set it up for that, although it, looks, it will work with a slight drown a little bit. But I didn't I don't plan on using this particular cup with this stove. What I did do was I measured these out and so that you could use uh, a 750 milliliter uh, like Tokes titanium pot. Uh, it's, I have a lot of kits built around that. If you look at my playlist for pots and cook kits, you can see all the different kits I made up if you're interested. But anyway, what I did was I went ahead and measured uh, the pot to make sure that it would set nicely on these uh, pins or stably. So that's something you can do. You might, depending on what pot you want to use, you can always adjust the, the distance on these uh, posts when you drill them out. Or I guess if you want to really be clever, if you had, you're going to use two or three different ones, you can maybe even put in more than one pin so it would be adjustable depending on what pot you plan on using with it. Or just make several kits. They're all kind of fun to do. But anyway, so of course this uh, rectangular Trangia style uh, pot. Yeah, it's not a problem. It'll fit on most things. But like I say, these days with some of the smaller uh, pots, you're kind of limited on uh, on size. Like here's a little stainless steel cup. Actually, this one will work because it's not rounded. It's flat on the bottom, so this will work. So probably most stuff will work on this. But so that's the uh, and to put it away. You know, you just have to unscrew it and. Uh, once this cools down, of course. 
And also at the end uh, of the video, of the construction video, if you want to uh, fast forward or do something else, um, I'm going to do a burn test on this uh, using this pot and uh, the burner, and we'll do a, a, a burn test, a boil test on this. So, oops. It's kind of a little snug. There we go. You just have to unscrew the pins. Now you just put them on either side of the uh, bolts or whatever the nuts. Oops, it's in the frame. Drop this in and voila. One thing I did do with this kit, one of the, the things that won't work is I was hoping that maybe a mini bic would fit in here so that you'd you know you'd have your fire source. Uh, and of course, you know, matchboxes, there's no way that's gonna work. Uh, you know, you could maybe be clever and uh, just put some matches in here and then maybe uh, glue the uh, striker over here if you wanted to kind of keep everything together in one. So what I did just uh, just kind of for completeness, I went ahead and I, I bought these mini uh, ferro rods. Um, these I, I got from, from China. They're not very good. They don't spark with a squat, but uh, I'm going to look for better ones better quality ones, but they will throw a spark eventually, <laughs> not real strong or consistent. And I, I broke off a piece of a, uh, a uh, hacksaw blade, so you, you know, it will, it will spark. So anyway, that will fit. So I can drop that in there, that in there. So now I got everything but the alcohol to get this stove going. And there you go. Put it in your pocket, put it wherever you want. So Anyway, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and turn this off for a minute and set up and get ready to start uh, showing you how I, I built this thing. Like I said, if you're interested in the burn test, it'll be toward the back of this video. So just uh, fast forward if you want to, if you don't want to look at the build. So I'll be right back. Whoops, I uh, saw this guy sitting off to the side. This is a uh, alcohol burner I made out of a mini um, Altoids tin. And you could also use that in here if you didn't want to use one of these. If you had one of these sitting around, you didn't want to buy one of these, or you didn't have one of these sitting around, but it'll fit in there too. So there you go. You got two options on alcohol burners. Uh, they, this one will also hold an ounce, and this one will hold an ounce of fuel. So anyway, let me uh, get ready for the build. Okay, to build one of these, uh, this is what you're going to need. For starters, of course, you need the Altoid 10. Um, you won't need the alcohol burner for the build. Set them aside. You'll need four of these Chicago bolts, and these are the with the shaft and the you know, the the little screw part here. Okay, you're going to need okay, and these are these are two inch Chicago bolts. Okay, and then you're going to need four nuts, and these are um, where do we go? It eight eight by thirty two coarse threaded nuts and if you're going to pick this up at the hardware store singly you know you can always test it to make sure that they're going to thread into the nut part of the uh of the chicago bolt yeah anyway delicate work all it works trust me <laughs> okay and those are and that's all there is to the, the stove itself now to build it all you'll need uh a couple of drill bits. Okay, this is you need a, a smaller one to for a pilot pilot hole when you're drilling the holes for the uh, for the, the the head part of the Chicago bolt to go through uh, pilot hole. And this particular one is uh, seven sixty fourth bit. I don't know what the millimeter is on that. Okay, and uh, then you need for the actual bolt to fit through you'll need an 11 64th and I did measure that one out that's about a four millimeter for people working on the metric system so you need two two uh, drill bits uh, you need a center punch for uh, to, to punch so that you can have a spot for the uh, drill bit so you don't drift around and you probably need uh, either a nut driver or a uh, a small wrench for the uh, uh, 
so you can screw these in. This is uh, 11 30 seconds. So that was the right size one. Did I get the right one? Yep. <laughs> and a screwdriver to kind of hold the uh, the bolts when you're tightening them down. And if you want, uh, I, you know, you can or you can or cannot you you know might want to use lock thread or thread lock on this. And if you do, make sure you get it at the very bottom of this. Let me get in here at this at the very bottom where the bolt's going to go on because you don't want any of that uh, Loctite to get up on this above the uh, the nut or you won't be able to screw your uh, your pins in so something to think about or if you don't use it you know these could loosen up over time and you can just you know just take your old Swiss Army knife or Leatherman tool screwdriver and, and you could probably just hold the nut with your finger tight it, you know it doesn't it doesn't have to be torqued down real heavy. It just has to be tight enough that it's not going to wobble around or get loose on you and fall out. So anyway, so I think that's all we're going to need for the construction. And I'll, now I'll show you how I went about doing this. Okay. First thing I did, well, after I measured the where I wanted my holes so it would fit uh, some of the pots I might use on it, I made a template out of a piece of you know, the light on here is kind of horrid isn't it so you can get in overhead i made a, a cardboard template and then i i measured the where one of the holes and um, and drew that in so for your own uh, and by the way i'll put all the dimensions and all this stuff in the description uh for you guys but anyway so for this particular build the holes were five eighths of an inch in from the long side and a quarter inch down or that's 15 millimeters in and seven millimeters down and then like i said i used the uh, the holes going to be 11 64th and well the glare on this is horrid or four millimeter so that's how i did it and then i you know basically trace this out and cut it out so now i have a template for marking so i get the holes in the right spot every time and like i said i'm going to make obviously more than one of these so now that that's all I have to do is center that on. Now, one mistake. This is one of those uh, center punches that uh, that actually it pops when you uh, when, when you push down hard enough on it to to really punch a deep hole. Well, you don't use it on these Altoid tins because the uh, metal is very very thin. And when I did this one. <laughs> I punched it pretty hard. I don't know if you can see the little dimples I did. I had to kind of pound it back out after I punched the holes too deep because it kind of crushed it. So, and I don't think you really need that big of a dimple, especially if you're going to use a little small pilot hole. If you went just straight with this one, I don't know. Like I said, I don't know if you guys done much drilling, but when you're doing flat metal bits and stuff, want to drift on you. But anyway, so what you do is just hold this down and uh, mark your. Uh, just lightly so you don't hopefully enough that it will punch enough of a hole that you can see it yeah so I got I got just enough of a dimple and that should uh, that should keep that centered enough where I can at least get the holes so that's the first step so now I got my four holes laid out now I'll pause this while I go set up the uh, drill press okay I got the small pilot hole bit in and mounted Let's turn on the old drill press. You could use a hand drill on this, but um, I just find that the drill press is a lot easier if you have one. But if you don't have one, you can use a hand drill. Okay, pilot holes are drilled. I was kind of um, fidgeting on this one, which you're in frame, because the uh, where the hole was, where the the punch 
Let me get this in frame. And where the punch was, was on that black spot, and I couldn't see it. <laughs> anyway, so next you're going to drill the uh, bigger. So I'll set the drill up for that. Okay, I'm ready to drill the, uh, the larger hole. Okay, I got the holes drilled in there. Now I go real slow with this because it, uh, sheet metal, especially this thin stuff, is going to want to kind of shred on you. And I'll show you what I mean here. If you look in here, you can see the little uh, burrs on here. And you need to kind of knock those off. So what I'm going to do now to get a start on that, oops, turn this off. I'm just going to use the drill here to kind of maybe knock those burrs off a little bit. Okay, the burrs are stubborn. Swung the camera around. Uh, next, I'm going to knock off, finish knocking off the burrs. You definitely want to knock those burrs off, or your nut is not going to seat flush with the bottom of the uh, the stove. So they're not very hard. I'm just going to use this screwdriver to kind of knock knock them off. They pop off pretty easy. You know, the other ones did. This guy's being stubborn. Let's see if we can get this guy off. There. This one, this one, this being a little stubborn, so I'm just going to use the drill bit here real quick. There. And I'll use a little bit of emery paper here to uh, smooth that out a little bit. Oops, I got it. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do to try to stay in frame. Of course, with these... Uh, Phone cameras, the angle on them is is kind of weird. It's not it's not square. It's, it's kind of off a little bit. So anyway, yeah, this guy is being real stubborn. Some of these little burrs, but yeah, got to get them knocked off. There we go. Come on. This video's gonna run long. Of course, on YouTube, they're talking about, you know, you want a longer video, like 20 minutes or more. That way you get more view time so you can make more money, which, you know, uh, I've noticed that some YouTubers tend to pad videos, which I don't, I don't do. If there's any padding, it's because of my incompetence. But anyway, so holes are drilled. Next, all you got to do is put in the top of the Chicago bolt on the bottom. Stay in frame. And then get your nut and screw that on. Yeah, this can be some delicate work here. If you got fat fingers, you could be in trouble. Anyway, let's see, get this thing started. And there you go. You just run that down. Now, at this point, probably before you on the bottom, you could put a little drop of the Loctite on there, but I'm not going to do it because I, I don't think it's, I don't think it, it might not be necessary. You can or can't. I just don't want to risk getting any of that Loctite on the top of the thread here so that the, 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 the bolt won't go on. Step. So then, just run that down. I'll see. Stay in frame here. This works better than a wrench, but use what you got, and then you can just come in here and tighten that down. 
There you go. Now you got the first ones in and you screw the post on. There you go. Anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and put the other three on. I won't make you suffer through watching it. You probably fast forward anyway. <laughs> okay, I got the old uh, posts or the, the bolts and the nuts all tightened down. Now, one thing to consider if you're going to size this other than the dimensions uh, that I gave you uh, is to make sure you don't get too close to the edge because you've got to get it far enough away that you can spin these uh, nuts onto the uh, the bolt piece there so it doesn't butt up against the the edge so so hey it, it's uh it's done <laughs> there's not much to it <clears throat> so what i'm gonna do is uh, go ahead and uh, i'll set this up for the boil test so i'll go ahead and uh, say screw these back on and then i'll set up i'll go ahead and uh, Turn you guys off while I uh, prep the, the water and stove and everything for a uh, boil test. So if you're interested, stay tuned. Okay, I'm all set up for the burn test. I've got uh, 16 ounces, two cups of water at 56 degrees. So let's go ahead and uh, and I got about an ounce of fuel in the burner. This will hold just just a little less than an ounce because you got to remember that the um, on this particular burner the the mesh and the a carbon felt will take up some of that one ounce volume from these tins. Let's fire this guy off. Okay, and then go ahead and put the water on. There we go. Everything in frame. There we go. And start. Start the timer. So. It's on its way, so uh, I'll go ahead and uh, shut this down and uh, come back as soon as I get a little close to a boil. Okay, uh, we're at uh, 210 degrees, 211 at 8 minutes and 50 seconds, so pretty respectable. Actually, it's boiling like crazy now, even though it's not 212. So we'll go ahead and call that a boil at 9 minutes. Looks like a rolling ball to me. So uh, there you go. We'll say nine minutes for the boil on this, which is pretty respectable. So anyway, I'll go ahead and I'm going to take this off the fire. And just to show you on, I didn't show you when I did the build on this uh, stove, but you can use the lid as a snuffer. And if you do, don't use the inside because you'll burn the little uh, gasket that's in there. Just use the backside. Just drop it on there and poof, it's out. So... There you go. There's your uh, Altoid tin alcohol, you know, lightweight alcohol stove. Now you could possibly use, besides, you know, alcohol. Like I said, you could probably use, you know, any kind of little small alcohol burner that you might have, and you could probably also get away with using um, solid fuel esbed or those uh, little liquid uh, gel gel alcohol uh, uh, pellets or capsules, whatever they're called any number of fuels but uh, i think alcohol is the cleanest burning so there you go uh can't think of anything else to say about it i hope you guys all enjoyed the video and uh we'll see you next time bye bye mm -hmm.